<laughs> so what happened with Steve Martin there, Jimmy, out there oh, in LA? Oh, God. I, God, I was howling this. when you tweeted that. Well, we, uh, we get uh, there. I love when my friends get uncomfortable. Oh. And... <laughs> We, you know, we get there nice and early. I have to go get my Grammy ID. and We get there set up, and we don't know what the day is going to be like because, uh, again, it, it's going to be a fuck. I think it's going to be a funeral dirge. So we do a bunch of artists, just like, like Vince Gill and a bunch of, you know, cool people. And then uh, I see Steve Martin right next to us talking to Billboard.com, who's right next to us. And he's with his band. The banjo band? They, they were nominated for two Grammys. Yeah, but it's still the banjo. Yeah. I mean, let's be oh, honest bluegrass. with each other. Bluegrass. So I, I fucking go, uh, I said, let's try to get Steve Martin. And I said to his publicist, I'm like, with The Tonight Show. And she's like, okay. And then uh, I said to the camera guy, I'm like, I don't know if he'll talk to me. Because I didn't know if he knew who I was or not. Mm. So he comes over and we said hello. And I start, the bit, the bit was, if you didn't see the bit, was me. I'm tired of never being nominated. So I was showing everybody my CD, asking them if they would hold it up on camera or if they won, would they wave it and hold it up and talk about me? You know, just being an ass. Right. And uh, it was despicable. <laughs> so we're talking for a couple of minutes, and he's, he couldn't have been nicer. He was funny. He, was, uh, he laughed when I was funny. Oh, like, no. You'll see some of it on the bit, but you won't see all of it because they had to edit. But he was really funny and nice to you, right? He, Can I play the clip before you... Uh... Sure. You think that makes sense? Um, yes. Okay, let me play the clip first. But some of it's visual. From The Tonight Show. Nor at the Grammys for The Tonight Show. Here's him and Steve Martin. Obviously with the great Steve Martin. Nominated for Best Bluegrass? Best Bluegrass album, yes. Not yeah, Best Bluegrass. Yeah, that really would be a lousy nomination. The best sod. Um, <laughs> so now, what do you do if you lose? Oh. You know, I haven't, I haven't even considered that. <laughs> What a great thing. Thank you for putting that out there. You know, you're an actor, uh, an actor, a singer. Um, do you feel like, da well, yeah, musician, you know. Yeah, okay. Sorry, I'm thinking of David Hasselhoff. Yeah. You're an actor, <laughs> uh, you're a musician. Uh, what made you think you would want to make the jump to music from acting? Why would you make uh, that big jump? Pure ego. Pure ego. Yes. No, I've never been nominated for anything. I know that's hard to yeah, imagine. You know that makes a lot of sense. <laughs> to some people it may. But I have a comedy CD. That's really me in high school. Would you hold that up if you win? What I... <laughs> I, I it's not about me. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to listen to this in my car on the way home. Please do. Yeah, with the volume down. Volume down. It's, it's always best with no volume. <laughs> and that was the segment. Uh, now, some of that happened before, mm -hmm. and some of that happened after. Oh. We were talking, and uh, he, he was, but he was being really charming and fun, and he was a, a genuinely nice guy. And then when I took the CD out, he looked at it, and he went, Jim Norton. Oh, no. And, and I forget the exact word, but he goes, you badmouthed me, or you wrote some nasty things about me. <laughs> oh, no. He's not supposed to know this. <laughs> and I went, I, I went, yeah, I did. But uh, <laughs> You just said that? Yeah, I, I did. I had to, but I was, I was like, but, I, but, I'm, but I'm a fan. Like, I felt... I knew there was no way to explain it, oh. and he goes, "It's okay, you're forgiven." And I'm like, "I really, I really do like you." And he goes, "That's okay, it's okay." Like he was, I think he was uncomfortable with it, oh. but I think it was after that that I asked him to hold it up, and he actually, you can't see it, but he actually laughed when I said, "Will you hold it up?" And then he was still. That's when he said to listen to it with the volume down. Like he was still funny after that. Wow. And he goes, "All right, we got it," because they had to move along anyway. But he was very, very pleasant, um, and I felt awful. I felt genuinely fucking terrible. Oh dude. man! What, so, now what did he? What did he get wind of? Don't know. I didn't ask because his band was there and there was a camera. He I, he didn't want to get into it, but he wasn't confrontational. Like, and, and I've been I've been thinking about nothing but that for the last couple of days. I feel oh, so fucking guilty about it and bad because it was like it was really mean shit that I said about him. What did you say? Or you don't want to say? Anything? Well, yeah, I mean, it's in the book. Just about I, I was making fun of the. The Pink Panther, I'm doing the Pink Panther. Right. But I just, it, it came off really fucking mean. And I didn't just stick to the Pink Panther. Like, I, I mean, I, like, it's funny. I was talking to, I know I'm a little off subject, but I was talking to, uh, to Jay before we went out and did the bit, the rehearsal. And he goes, ah, I heard you got bagged by Steve Martin. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I did. And, and he goes, hey, welcome to my world. I'm like, what do you mean? He goes, oh, every day I get that from somebody. Like, wow. I, I, he goes, hey, that joke you did. And, 
And I'm like, yeah, but Over I Over jokes? Well, people get mad, yeah. He fucking shits on people. Oh, they get yeah, mad. Man. And then he has to have them on the show. Right. But uh, I'm like, yeah, but I did more than a joke. I wrote this thing. And I'm like, uh, I don't think you read the book. And I'm like, it was about him doing Clouseau. And I, 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 was, I felt it was disrespectful to Peter Sellers. And I get really annoyed about it. And he goes, why? He goes, I'm like, I don't know. It was Peter Sellers' thing. I'm like, yeah, but he goes, and he makes a good point. He goes, yeah, but uh, who's the guy playing? He goes, who's the guy playing Bond? Uh, he goes, Daniel yeah, Craig's playing Bond. Craig. He didn't steal Daniel that from Craig. Sean Connery. I'm like, I know he didn't. Oh. Like, why? He, it bothers me. I'm not, I don't regret uh, attacking Al Sharpton. Mm -hmm. I don't regret attacking uh, Jesse, Ven uh, I'm sorry, Jesse Jackson at, uh, at all. <laughs> I, literally, I really, do you regret Steve Martin because he called you out on it? No. No, no, no. Because I, I think your point is pretty valid about the whole uh, Pink Panther. But he, here's what bothers that was, me about that was such a Peter Sellers thing. Here's what bothers me about my attack on Steve Martin. I attacked him for things like it was, it was, it wasn't necessary because he never did anything to me. Like Jesse uh, Jackson, Al Sharpton, like those guys go after people's jobs. We know why we hate them. Mm -hmm. I just didn't like a movie choice he made. Mm. Uh, and this is, I'm not being Hollywood, Jimmy. He's, we're not going to work together. My career has not been hurt by this at all. It's not going to help my career to feel bad about it. It's really not. I mean, I'm in a very lucky position as a comedian. I can f pretty much say and do what I want. I have very little parameters where I can get in big trouble. And I've had almost no repercussions my entire career. Mm -hmm. This one, I just feel bad about it. Because it's like he was so fucking nice. I thought, like, this guy, here's this guy, like, who the like he's fucking hosted the Oscars? He was great, and I've said that. Um, I didn't like the Pink Panther, but he's fucking a best selling author and he's being nominated for Grammys. And then to have to have this in his head, like some shithead comic that shit on him, it really annoyed me because when other comedians shit on me, it bothers me. Like, it's pe regular people shitting on you is one thing, but when another comic attacks you, you feel. Worse about your it. peers, oh. and I typically well, he's not even a peer. He's so no, I understand in the stratosphere but, but you're above in the, me. You're in the same game, is what I'm saying. Yeah, and I don't typically uh, fuck with other comedians. You, you know that, like even guys that come in here, like we've had some guys come in not do well. I don't fuck with them. I just I have a real love for comics and a real camaraderie, and I feel bad about it for that reason. Like I was on the plane with Sharpton after I trashed him, and uh, I said hello. But I had no guilt. I had no, oh no, he might know who I am. I really didn't. So did you have a plane with Sharpton and you didn't take one for the team and <laughs> open the door? <laughs> <laughs> what I don't understand is, like, uh, did he feel shitty about the Steve Martin thing before this whole thing went down, though? The thi the ones I have felt bad about a little, the things I have oh, felt bad. Oh, so you have felt bad of about some I of the guys you wrote about. Yes. Oh, interesting. Because, who? And, and this is what bugs me about the fans, is like when you have a moment like this, they're like, oh, you're going to Hollywood, you're changing. No. Don't worry about that. I'm not. I'm still a piece of shit. The people that understand are out there. I felt bad, and I've said this before, part of my Hillary Clinton attack I felt bad about, because I like her more now mm -hmm. than I used to, mm -hmm. and there were certain things I attacked her for which were legit, and there were other things I was like, eh, I kind of felt a little bit bad about. My Heather Mills chapter, I don't feel bad about, but I was a little douchier to Paul McCartney than I should have been, because I genuinely like him. It's like, in the spirit of being honest and funny, I should have blasted people who are, like I like to fucking blast hard targets. Like I don't I don't pick and not that Steve Martin's an easy target, but he's a guy that never did anything to me. Like you know what I mean? Like he's never been a, But like, it wasn't about that. It was about him taking on the Pink Panther and movies. I, but the tone That's of still what I wrote, bothersome, I think. I I didn't like it. And but the tone of what I wrote didn't just reflect that. The whole book was very fucking angry. And I don't yeah. regret writing the book. Well, it's it where is I called was I Hate Your Guts. I mean. Yeah, and, and he shouldn't have been in that category. Like Maxwell, the guy from Cleveland who fucked with us. I don't dislike him anymore at all. He's fired from radio. It's like, that sucks. I don't want to see any guys get shit canned. Yeah. But I don't regret what I wrote about him because it was a response to him fucking with us. It was a response to him saying mean shit about me. So I don't feel bad about it at all. Not an ounce of guilt, no matter how vicious it was. That shit was fun. It was. That shit was fun when mm. it went down. I forgot all about him. But this one, kind of, because he's a comic, it's like, ugh, uh, I just felt really bad about yeah. it. And then meeting him and then realizing, like, we're at the Grammys and he's been nominated. And again, if he was a guy that fucked with me, but he wasn't. He's just a guy, he's just a, a guy doing a movie I didn't like. Yeah. And a guy who I loved my whole life growing up, and then all of a sudden I'm just like, well, fuck it. Like, what's wrong with me? <laughs> 
Like uh, what? It was. It wasn't. I think you're being a little harder on yourself no, no, than not, you need. I'm be. not fucking. I'm I'm not, I don't want to put myself through a window. No, no, I don't mean that. I mean like just hearing what you're saying looks. Uh, it seems a little more than you should even be. I don't think I, so. I, I, I feel it because, again, seeing what he was like as a guy, he's a nice dude. I don't feel bad making fun of the Pink Panther, but he was so genuine and willing to be pleasant. It was like. He didn't do anything that deserved that tone, mm -hmm. where Sharpton, no matter how nice he was, has done shit that deserved that tone. All right, then, let's talk about the tone, because I think what you said about Steve Martin and the Pink Panther movies, I'm going to say it again, was on, right on. But maybe the tone of it is what bothers you. It was. It's a very good observation, Jimmy. You have Russell Brand, who's doing the fucking Arthur movie, hoping right. to get another one. And and we've always said on this show that we hate when you know great uh, comedies are remade. Yeah. We hate it. I agree. I mean, we've talked about other movies that they remake, and it kind of makes sense because the technology has changed, and you know what I mean? Right. But with comedy, comedy is what it is. You know, if something's funny, it's funny. I would love to sit Steve Martin down and ask him, if someone came along in another five years, let's say, and decided to redo The Jerk, would you be okay with that? Because that know, was an amazing movie, right? He might be. He and probably you know what, would. Well, I, that's was, what I would love to ask him. You know what he might say if you ask him about Pink Panther? And, and this is, this is I've been thinking, I was on the plane the whole night. Yeah, oh, man. He might go like, I love Peter Sellers. Like, I was honored to do that. Like, even though I didn't love what he did. Uh, but but he may come from that place like, I love Peter Sellers. Like, it was an honor to play the role that he played. Like, I just thought of all this shit last night. And that's why I feel like making fun of it is one thing. Mm -hmm. But... Like, there's no way to spin what uh, Jesse Jackson or Sharp... I keep raising them because I can't, literally can't remember a lot of people I went after, but those are the two big ones. Or, or Oberman, say. There's no way to spin what Oberman did. And I would probably like Oberman if I met him. I've heard he's a good guy. But there's no way to spin what he did to not make me angry. Like, there's no way to spin him attacking fucking Imus right. without making me angry. But that's where all of my anger was coming from at that time, was that fucking politically correct shit and feeling like it was we were under attack and nobody was sticking up for people saying unpleasant stuff and he got caught up in the tone of that mm -hmm. as opposed to me just making fun of the movie or shitting on the movie poster i don't know if it makes but it makes to me as a performer it makes sense and i don't if people think i'm backing down well i just what? felt really i felt bad about it and it doesn't behoove me to say that it doesn't help my career and believe me i'm not going to be a big fucking we're not doing a movie together i just as a guy <laughs> felt bad that's hmm. that's you know no one is saying there's some honesty right there from jim Norton. i should apologize no one is I, saying I, I should do anything i just as a person i felt bad i now understand the tone of what you said but i i you know i i feel like someone like steve martin has so many opportunities in hollywood to make funny movies and to go right. down go down the the peter sellers road right. just was bothersome to me right. I'm like really you have to do that you've had an amazing career and it seems like you must be getting a lot of scripts that y you can make really funny but can you imagine if he said like i i just i loved peter sellers i thought he was a genius i'm sure he would say that like but like that's not the place that i thought it was when i wrote that i'm thinking it's coming from this place of fucking disrespect for Peter Sellers and fuck him, I'm better. It, like, why would I think that? It was such idiocy. I uh, I love to think that Steve Martin is so mean and calculating that he knew that would get to you more than just saying ah fuck off and walking away. Like like as he walked away from you, he he turned to somebody he knows and goes that ought to hold that little fucker for a while. <laughs> I do like, I, like just knowing that that would torture you that he was nice, <laughs> but he was nice before that, and I know he didn't recognize yeah. me because he reacted naturally. But it was probably embarrassing for him because his band was there. Like I could tell he didn't want to talk about it, and I wasn't uh, going to. But I felt yeah. as a person, I have never been pressured to apologize mm -hmm. by a company or anything. I mean, I just never. I've been, I've had free reign. This one I feel bad about on my own. More importantly, I'm amazed that you guys both could move on from that and, and get some funny shit done for Leno. It's I even, like you just told us, like the clip we played, some of it happened before he called you yeah, out. And professional. Then, and then some happened afterwards. I love that he called me out. Really, it was a relief. It was a really... Because I felt like a fraud talking to him. Does he know? Does he not know? I just, I felt like a fucking, an absolute fraud. You should write him a note. I don't know if it'll ever get to him. I've been thinking about it. Write a nice I can note. Get a, I can absolutely get a note to him. Or, I, I used to have his phone number. Did you? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll text him. That wouldn't give him the creeps. This goes way back. Someone uh, let me in on the fact they had Steve Martin's phone number. And I used to call him at uh, BAB. And he would go, hello. 
and that's all I would put on the air. I was too scared to talk. Of course, <laughs> because you can't cold call the celebrity in general. No. It's kind of against the rules. No, man. <laughs> so he, Steve, uh, that was me way back. I wonder. I, how I would call him every out. night. How do you find out? I wonder, like, how and 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 the moment. You like, Google I would yourself, love to know man. You shit. Google yourself at a time uh, in the book yeah. where someone tells him, you know, this asshole Jim Norton. And if, I don't even know if he ever read it. I don't even know if he read it. Why are you saying how did he know? The book was on the Times. No, no, I know. I, not so, so much how did he know. Like, I, I, I want to know the exact moment he oh. read it and what he thought. Like, <sighs> dude, <laughs> coming from anybody else, it would have been annoying. But there is, like, I've read so much. I've read, and I get a lot of hate tweets mm. and a lot of nasty email. Believe me, I get deservedly a, so. Dude, I can't argue. <laughs> but when if it comes from another comedian, I immediately get fucking violently annoyed. Yeah. Like, like you fucking piece of shit. Like you, we're we're yeah, we're working uh, in the I same. I don't fuck with you. Why are you fucking yeah. with me? Like, and that's probably how he felt if it was even that aggressive. But yeah. he never fucked with me. He never bad mouthed me. He was never uh, uh, rude to me or did anything to deserve that as a comic. He offended your eyes with that movie. <laughs> I didn't. Uh, you know, doing a movie I don't like. You know what? What he could he could watch my fucking movies and go, you stink, and you and he's right. One line in Spider Man, it's just it's just bothering me that I did that. Mm. It's really fucking bothering me, and I wish he wasn't so nice. But anyone that's ever trashed somebody and then met them, if they did something really trashing worthy, and you meet them, fuck them. Uh, but just because he did, that's the only thing he's ever done was a movie I didn't like. Maybe you'll get lucky; he'll turn out to be a serial killer. They'll discover that he uh, has bodies buried. But I was getting tweets from people, and they're like. Like I, I tweeted, I said, uh, Steve Martin called me out, as he should have. He was very nice. I feel like a dick. That was it. It wasn't a groveling tweet, yeah, but it was yeah. the truth. And people were like, how'd you not spit in his face? I'm like, oh, God. Dude, he was nice. I, Those people again. I bet you um, you didn't treat yourself. Oh, I did. You yeah, did. But you only that. treat yourself when you feel like you did a good job. Frozen yogurts. Well, I felt the bit went well. Considering all the people that didn't walk the carpet, we didn't see Springsteen. We didn't see Madonna. We didn't see uh, Lady Gaga. Gaga. We didn't see uh, I said McCartney. We didn't see any of those major, major celebrities because no. I think they just went in the side door. Mm -hmm. They didn't. They didn't fucking stop well, to talk to anybody. Well, let's play another clip going into the break. Uh, Norton at the Grammys for the Tonight Show. Which one should we play? We got Vince uh, Gill left, Dave Grohl, and the Civil Wars. Um, Which one do you like? Vince Gill, Dave Grohl. Was Grohl cool? He was great. Yeah, play the Grohl one. It's really quick. It's quick. All right, yeah. we'll play this going in a break. It's, it's a visual, but it's yeah. It'll work. Yeah, it works. It works? Yeah. All right. Hold on, Dave Grohl. Dave Grohl. Do it fast. I'm getting yanked. Dave Grohl from Foo Fighters. How are you? I'm really good. How are you? I took a picture with you one time and you licked my head. I did. Yes. Can I lick it again? I would like that. Thank you, Dave, very much. Have a great show, Dave Grohl. <laughs> did you see that the Pythons are talking about getting together again? Oh boy. What do you I think? didn't do right. one. Yeah, it was what do you just think? just uh, some rumblings about it. I think everybody but Eric Idle. Wants to do it. Really? Wow. Yeah. And Graham Chapman. Well, yeah, he uh, well, he's, <laughs> can't count on him. No, not, not at this so, point. Wow, why Eric Idle is, 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 you need Eric Idle. Yeah, I agree, man. Why do I they want to do this? They're bored? Um, Maybe they just want to do it one more time. You know, you, you take 30 years off, mm -hmm. take one more shot. If they, if Eric Idle doesn't do it, uh, Steve Martin will, will pop in or and you, do it. Uh, yeah, <laughs> do. Don't talk to uh, Jimmy about Steve Martin. No, I don't. I feel bad about my time. Did you Did that. you hear? I saw your Twitter about it. I feel bad about but it. But he, yeah, he ran into Steve Martin as he was covering the Grammys for Leto, and yeah. Steve Martin called him out on the stuff he wrote in his book. He was cool about it though. But, <laughs> and then I, I, I felt a little bit bad about that for a while because he's a comedian, and I, I hit, I hit another comedian really hard, and he didn't do anything to me. I just didn't like a movie choice he made. Right. And uh, when I look at that, I'm like, I should have been more. And I just recently watched. When he accepted the honor for the uh, Mark Twain Award, right. and he did a night, and he was fucking hilarious in yeah. his speech. And I'm like, that what I wrote doesn't reflect the fact that I recognize that it was unfair uh, because he's not a guy who would have to free speech like these fucking pigs, Jesse mm -hmm. and Sharpton, even a stupid Al Roker, and all. I feel great trashing those guys. Right, but Steve Martin it was unfair. Uh, did you just love Peter Sellers? Is that the thing though? I did, but it more annoyed me. That I, I thought a great role like the Pink Panther, you couldn't improve on that. Mm -hmm. And I was like, "What are you doing? You don't, you know, you don't need to do this." I, I kind of equated it with if somebody had put on a white suit and an arrow through their head, 
as a comic, you'd be accusing them of stealing your shit, and you'd be right. And that was his well, role. better a better example. What if they remade the jerk? Would he be okay with that? I'm imagining because that was a that was a, un a unique character, obviously. Yeah, I don't know. I'm imagining he would be. I would love to ask him that question. Have I you... don't know why I got so annoyed at like being annoyed is one thing, but why did I? I took it like I, I reacted to that the way I would if somebody had bad mouthed me personally, or if somebody. You know, I, I just it was just out of whack. Right. I, I felt a little bit bad about that because I, as a comedian, I try to lay off other comics. I never hit them that hard because there's a weird thing you have with other comics. But like Russell Brand doing Arthur, it's like yeah, I didn't love it. You, you know, you felt like you could improve on that. Yeah, those were great movies. But he just stand up, so I'm like more gentle with other stand ups. Maybe it's phony of me, but I got a question for you. I when I was growing up, I loved Steve Martin's uh, stand up. Yeah, you, did you like it? Yeah, and I, at this point in my life, I don't really remember his bits anymore. But I remember as a kid in high school and stuff, loving Steve Martin. He was weird, and it doesn't hold up as well. But some of it's still really funny. Um, his bits on the Tonight Show were funny, or when he, on SNL, he was an amazing mm -hmm. host. He was a great Oscars host. And I, I, I watched an interview with Pryor recently. Did you ever see it was uh, on the set of Stir Crazy? And uh, I guess they had shot in the morning, and and the audio got messed up, so they had to reshoot in the afternoon. And it was with a school teacher. And Richard is sitting there on a director's chair, and he's got like a little audience. It's outdoors, and he's obnoxious because he'd obviously had a few and probably done a few lines. And uh, the guy badmouths Steve Martin to him, just kind of joking. And Pryor's like, "Steve Martin is brilliant, man. Don't badmouth Steve Martin and make me feel good." Like he got like a little right. annoyed. And I'm like, "Man, I fucking I just I watched that again recently. I'm like, ugh, right? Fucking douchebag I am." The cool thing about that whole story, you guys ended up doing comedy together after he called you out, and it worked. Yeah, but I mean, that That's was a weird spot to be in. That was towards the end of the bit when he finally saw my name because he didn't recognize my face. He didn't put two and two together right. until he saw my name on the CD. But then he still was okay with it. He wasn't a dick. I'll say it all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I I've kind of felt bad about it. I have to watch that footage. I have it. He was in here not too long ago. He was in here. I ran into him in the lobby. And all he did was something to do with you know his banjo doing that banjo tour. Yeah, yeah. He won't. Uh, he won't do. Uh, that's what he wants to talk about. Yeah. Did you, you speak to him? No, I just yeah. fucking went. There's fucking Steve Martin yeah. walking by. That was fucking plenty for me. Where you at with the banjo? You, you ever, know, it's a banjo. You, you ever like get into it? it? it ever? Like, no. He's good at it, but it's I, not my. Ronnie's a rock guy. You ever get into the banjo? Well, you know, I'm trying to think. I mean, I it all sure sounds the same to me. A little bit of it in the background. It's okay. I don't mind. But, Mixed in with everything else, maybe. But if it's front and center, no, 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 I can't. I never got into it. That yeah. and the ukulele, like I, I don't know, man. I don't know. You're not going to go to Eddie Vedder's fucking ukulele tour that he does. Travis went, I yeah. think. Did he does a ukulele? And he loved tour? it. A whole tour, yeah. just him and the ukulele. Yep. But I love his voice so much that I think I'd be all right with it. Mm -hmm. But I'm not going for the ukulele, no. No. Oh, Roland not. got one. Roland got a picture with Steve Martin, huh? Steve Martin looks thrilled.